G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel. I'd like to teach you what you can paint in acrylic. So I want to bring you over here and just show you what I've got on the canvas. So I've got my horizon area right across the canvas and right off it because I'm going to get paint everywhere and I still want to know where that area is. There's going to be some beautiful rocks mid-ground, beautiful greenery trees hiding in a dusk lit sky with some reflective shadows on the water that's what these lines are and there's going to be some rocks soft titanium white onto the canvas there now i use this soft titanium white with some retarda to condition the canvas for the beginning of the colors so let me find my retarda and for those people who don't know what retarda is it's just a medium that'll slow down the drying time of any acrylic paint and I want to grab my putter on a brush, which is this one here. I do sell this brush and a couple of blending brushes that I use for me clouds. If you want them, just simply message me on Facebook. Link is in the description box below. And you message me payable through PayPal as of today's date. They're 45 US dollars if you're living outside of Australia. I'll do the whole sky and the water. All right. So what I'll do, you have the camera on, yep. I want to get this painted onto the sky. See, if I put my horizon line right across the canvas and right off, look what's happening right here. See how I've just went over it? I've gone over it, but I know where the area of it is because the line went right out. That's just a little thing that I do. All right, I'm going to stroke this left and right like a pure gentleman and get it to a nice, thin, even film. Coming to the tip of my brush. Okay, there we go. I've got to wipe the, the nonsense off the brush just so as I can get the sky in. The sky is going to be a dusky colour. I'm going to get a little, I'm getting the yellowy sky colour. So I've got my Indian yellow. I've got some yellow ochre and maybe, I don't know, cadmium yellow. Where's my titanium white? I'm going to need some of that as well. So I'll leave that there. You can see everything on the palette. Good stuff. I'll turn that light on just to make things happen. There we go. All right. So the sky is going to be mainly yellow. So I'm going to pick up the yellow and do the sky first and then add the values where I want them. Watch how easy this is. And, that, and that's why I always say you can do it. Get the whole sky yellow. Don't worry about that bit there because that's where the mid-ground's going to be. And you don't need retarder under that. Okay. There's my sky. Of course, it's a sun going to be here. It's all going to be reflective in the water. But when we put the dark bits over it, all this light stuff's going to shine through and make wonderful stuff happen. Now, I'm going to stroke that left and right and get it nice and artistically pleasing to the eye. And I want to darken up some areas of this sky now. So I'm going to wipe that brush. And what do I want to do? I'm going to get some of the cadmium yellow so let's just swing this back down here so you can see what i'm doing or with the putter on a brush so far i'm going to use a big word now you ready i'm going to incorporate it into the sky here and i'll do it like i'm a bit of an art let's go there we go sweep it along there pick up some more a bit over here Some, oh my goodness, that didn't last long. I'm just going to grab some more on the palette there. Get bits of this in the sky and bits of it in the water as well. There we go. Now, I'll rub a lot of it off. Stroke that into the sky, leaving bits of the yellow there. This is very easy to do, okay? You can do this if it's bit difficult for you just means you need practice if you're watching me or someone else paint you think my goodness they make that look easy it's just because we've done it a lot of times or we've had a lot of practice there we go we've got those other values in the sky which i'm looking for i'm happy with that i hopefully this looks good in the finished photo i'll put a photo of it 
as the thumbnail. I'm just using the reference picture for now as the thumbnail. The reference picture is from Free Picks. Okay, now we need our white. I'm going to grab the fan brush. Picking up the titanium white out of the tube, the good stuff, the structured stuff. I want to get me clouds on. Watch what I do here. I'm going to grab a blending brush. Okay, one of my blending brushes that I use. These work good for the way I do my skies and clouds and blendings. They might not work for everybody. Some, so many tutorials out there got different brushes. And it's these are help you to paint the way I paint, if you like the way I paint. Now, the sky is just going to have some cirrus cloud zooming across there. I want a lot of nice, bright bits scaping past right off the painting. See, I just come right off. Don't just stop there and frame the painting with it. You want to get right across the sky there. Hang on, let me... Nice, big, glary bit here. And then coming across there, I need more white. Bear with me a moment. Picking up more white. Right across there. Beautiful. I want to keep this a little bit darker. Okay. I'm, I'm getting ready to blend with the fan brush. Now I'm going to pick up my blending brush. And I'll get you a little bit closer. <coughs> okay. And I want this kind of horizontally vibing across my sky. So I'm just going to dance it and do bits of drags and get it across the sky there. Trying not to kill too much of the brightness of it because I've got to put me a bit of a sun subject there as well. It's not going to be a defining round sun. It's just going to be an element of a sun. Okay. And if you don't know what I mean, when I do it and you look at it, then you'll know what I mean. And then you can look at the person next to you and go, oh, yeah, I know what he meant. Oh, I know what he means. There we go. See, uh, someone asked me, forget who it was. There's a hair there. I'm going to get it out. I never see Ian paint with a knife. I don't do, let's say, mountains and things like that. Oil artists paint different to acrylic artists, in my opinion, and they can paint with knives. I feel the way I paint with acrylics, I hardly use a knife. I'll get a little bit of this maybe down into here, some glaringness, just some glaringness there, and I'll push it through just with this fan brush. I don't want to get my... There we go. Just getting a bit of glare there as well. Where else are we? Okay, some out here. Just priming it up for... See, we're getting the water done at the same time. Isn't that great? Now we're going to grab some more white paint. And I want to, I'll use a different brush. I'll use my filbert brush for this. Just grabbing some white. And I want to get the sun area just vibing in the sky there, okay? So I'll get that bombed up. And my rocks are about there. Okay, I'll go about here. I want it. I want it really white. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be cheeky. I'm feeling the the temper of that paint, and I'm feeling I can get me rubber glove, okay? Get me fingers and just do a bit of fingerization into the paint there, into the yellow. I'm going to wipe my finger as I go so I'm not destroying too much of the white. And you can use a brush, you can use anything you want. If it's working for you, that's all that matters. You're the artist. Now, I'm feeling that's sort of working, but it's pretty much rubbing out what I want to do there. So I've got to get more white, get a bit more of that, because I need that a bit more. There we go. Beautiful. I'll see if this will just sit it down a bit. Easy does it. There we go. Look at that. Look at these brushes. They work brilliant for me. I love them. See, that's the sun area. Is the camera picking that up there? Yes, beautiful. 
Now I want it a little bit brighter. So I'm going to try and get some more intensity right here. It's very wet. I might have to dry it to do that. Now, see me horizon line there? I still know where it is, eh? That's why I go all the way across. There we go. Just push that down there. I want to grab a beautiful controlling flat brush. What I mean by a beautiful controlling flat brush is one that can control it beautifully. See how sharp and chiseled that is? That's what I'm looking for. So what I want to do is crack it because it's a bit crunchy and dry from when it was washed. I'll just lightly dab it in water and then I want to pick up this color I'm just going to test a bit out there it's a little bit too dark so what I will do is add a bit of this whiteness to it or maybe a lot more of that white to it and a bit of water just to inculate it and chisel me brush up so I can get some nice I won't show you down there I'll show you on the bloody painting I used to hate that when I was watching YouTube learning to paint. They'll be explaining what they're going to do and I'm in there watching it thinking, well, why don't you just bloody do it? And sometimes I find myself doing that and I remind myself, oh, I'll just do it, I'll just do it. So the very top of the water we need with this just... What I'm going to do is try and cheat. Hopefully it'll skip across making lots just out there just like that how far should I come pretty much to where my rocks are going to be and then I'll get the rest of it and I'll start putting me little scallops in And we'll just probably separate that bit of brush stroke into some looser dollops of um, movement on top of the water. There we go. Get them long, not little loopy looking things. And I wouldn't mind a little bit of maybe darkness. Just let me see in the sky up here maybe just the just the slightest bit up here not not darkness but this warm kind of color i'm just vibalizing up in here it's, it's very rubbery and beautiful to work with at the moment any more down there probably little bits where i'm going to have me waves me shadowed waves, just little cressing waves. Something all the way along here. And where else can we go? And we'll just kind of separate where the water's going to change colour. Because in between all this water, we're putting the colours on top and the yellow will mimic the sky's reflection hitting the surface of the water if you get me drift all right we'll take the tape off hopefully we don't peel my paint off oh, that's all right i like that see how it's kind of given it that look going out there when we put the rest of the business here it's going to make it go more mm, that way over there now i've dried the sky i can um arc up the sky the the sun value there a bit more because it's a bit a bit weak and it needs to have a bit more grunt in it so i'm just going to get that filbert brush again and get get it stamped on oh yeah look at that that's see what happens when you know what to do it's just that sometimes when i'm filming i just can't be bothered i just want to get it done because i'm always in a brisk kind of a hurry i want this to be coming behind that mountain so it's going to set back the distance there so that's the mountain's going to come in front of that that's why i'm putting it more to the right hand side of the canvas here and i also want to put a bit of a um 
you know, hang on. This kind of vibe with the the sunlight peeking through. You'll see when it's all finished. If you squint your eyes and look at it like that, you'll sort of know what I mean. Keep them straight and level. In cahoots with the horizon line. The horizon line is here. When you need things in cahoots, keep them that way. If you sort of go like that, the thing starts looking a bit iffity affity and you can start getting a bit disappointed with your work. But you're learning when you get disappointed if you make mistakes. So don't worry about it. We all make mistakes. We've all been there. I'm just kind of giving some more highlights where I feel I want. I'm just caressing across that canvas. The, the sky, the paint's still rubbery, so I'm able to push it in, which is what I want to do. And you can see what's happening with the sky. I'm just looking at it in the viewfinder there, seeing where I want something just up here, scooting in, scooting in, scooting in. I'm looking at the reference just a little bit just to get the ideas, and then I'm not even looking at the reference i'm using my own imagination to do it i'm using the reference for color values and for placement not for detail because i'll tell you a little secret you might already know you or you might have seen someone else's painting and there's something a bit weird or a weird shape or something a little bit iffy affy there and you're wondering what it is and what it is is you've copied it to the T that sometimes you don't know what that object is, but you're putting it there because it's in your reference picture. Now, over here is a lot more glarier. I'm just getting the glary bits in. And all the dark bits will sit this down. So it might look a bit, what are you on there, Ian? What's happening? But it'll come together. I'm just going to look how long we've been going for. Uh, 24, oh my goodness, the time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? But this is pretty much dry brushing what I'm doing here. A lot of glare from the sun there. When we get these greens, they're going to be reflecting in there as well, looking sensationally sensational. All right, let's head on to that, and you can get a vibe of what's happening there, okay? All right, now we're going to do a base for the um, mountain there, I'm going to use, just to make it easy, because not everybody has the um, colours that I do have. And some people think, well, of course he used that colour. I've got to have it. But I just use those colours because I have them. doesn't mean they're a must-have for the tutorial. Um, down here on the palette, I'm getting some burnt umber. And I want it very dark. Pretty, I don't want to use black, so I'm going to have some of the burnt umber mixed with it. So I'm just washing that filbert out. And I want to, where are we, camera down there? I want to blacculate this burnt umber, so I'll pull it out. I only need about this much of it here. Both sides of the brush. Load it up, control it where it is in the brush. I'm not just hoping for the best. I've pushed it as even as I can into those brush bristles. And now I want to start blacculating that bit of burnt umber there. Okay, now I'm looking at it, and if you come a little bit closer, mind the shadow of the camera, it's, it's getting pretty much too black, so I'll start pulling some more brown into it. There we go. And this is going to add the depth, the deepness to our mid-ground where the green's going to go. All right, so it's going to be about, I don't want to just start from here. There's that, that paint green tape is the end of my painting, so I'll, I'll come off the there where I want to come so it's looking natural the way it's coming down. And like I said, I want to come in front of my sun there. So to do that, I want some nice airy bits out there before I get the tight bit coming in front of it. Where's the water down here? So the, this is going to come to about there. And we're coming down... Now, you can do any type of hill, foliage, or tree here, any type you want. Now, I'm just going to block that in. Now, if it's your first time here watching, say hello. Tell me who you are, where you're from, and when I get to the comments afterwards, 
I can say hello back to you. Yes, let's say it's a storm. Let's dance in the storm. Now I'm going to get a flat brush now, not a big one, just something I can control here. Beautiful, good size there. Same paint. I want to paint in me rocks as well where I want them. So I want them sort of getting the edges of them nice and dark. I want to go just get my mouse stick. I want to go just past see me horizon line there. I want to go just beyond it a little bit. There we go. And now we'll start making the the rocks. Come along. Keeping them in cahoots with the horizon line. Oh, that's a bit too buckly. Come up. By the brush, come in. And we'll probably have something about here as well, just jutting out a little bit more, but keeping it very flat at the bottom. Block all that in. These are going to be rocks. Now, what I want to do is grab my bullshit stick and just start getting the ones out in the water. I'm just getting this a bit more defiant here. And this needs a dry before you detail it. If you go wet on wet with this, it'll be hard to get your other colours to stick. Okay, a lot of you know that, and then again, a lot of you don't. So I'm going to grab my straight edge stick, grab some of that paint, get a rock maybe here, uppity up at the top and a bit flat at the bottom, just like that. Look at that, so easy. Uh, maybe something just jutting out here, a little bit smaller, just to break up the bottom out there. Something like that. And we're in the picture. They're pretty much ways down here. We've got lots of bands of rocks. And this stick's going to help me keep them in cahoots with the horizon line. Now, you need a lot of them to be dark. I'm just adding a little bit more water to that paint because it's getting a bit jammy. Now, if you're going to paint along with this tutorial, see what I'm doing here, watch it and just see what I'm doing and just realise you don't have to paint your rocks exactly the way I'm doing it. Just watch what I'm doing and then go, oh, righto, I'll put some long shadowy rocks there and you'll be knowing how to finish it off because obviously you're going to watch the rest of the video. And then there's a lot of scattered stragglers out here just on their own. Where's the bottom? There are some right coming way down the bottom. They can be a bit bigger as well. And the sky is reflecting in the water. Lots of rocks. Big one out here even in between the bit there. I won't go too much out there. Now, what I've got to do, oh, let's put the camera a bit better. What I've got to do is get the dark band in the water for the crescent wave. Grey onto the palette here and a little bit of cerulean blue. Where's my grey? See, I always buy this one. I always use Atelier, but this one's uh, toning grey mid. It's a series one. The higher the series, the more expensive it is. But I find that helps me out a lot with the, the way I do my paintings, that, that colour there. It's one of my pet favourite colours. You'll find that you end up adopting colours that you gravitate to. Okay, I've just got me flat brush again. Now, I want to get a bit of water into that. And I'm just looking at the reference there for colour value. This paintbrush is crazily loose and get a little bit of this in there now sort of a silvery blue okay now I need my straight edge stick for here let me grab this straight edge stick now and I want to grab from this rock here where are we 
that bit of band there, I want to put like a bit of a a thickness, darkness of a wave there. How do they got it there just like this? Now, don't wet it too much. I might have to give this another coat because it's a little bit weak coming right across nice and thin out here. And then we get another one right above it. See how the straight edge stick, it's going to allow me to keep a nice even distance. Come a little bit thinner, jingle jangle it a bit, make it here and there like so. And there's lots of little wishy-washy ones here. Get on there, you dog. Okay, don't worry if you go over some of your rocks because that's just the shadows for your rocks. You'll end up highlighting them in a minute and sinking back any mishaps there. Now we need some of this just against here for now. Is my camera in the right spot? Just. Just against the bottom of this as well. Just about there. I need to have a look at that. That's okay. Now I want to get a bit of white on my brush. So I'll just pick up white on that. Hopefully it'll work. I'll let it mix with it a bit just to crest some of that and just tone it into the painting a bit. Just something like that. All right, I want to get on with the filbert brush and those trees now. So the way I do trees, it's just the way I like to do them. I want this to be green. So I'm going to use three values of green. I'll use the base coat, the mid-tone, and a highlighted color. So for the base, I've got Viridian. Now these Atelier Free Flows, they're good for doing this part of work where you're just going to, it's already inky enough. Let me dry that. Now, before we paint this green, I want to block in the rocks and then the foliage can sit in front of it and behind it. The way that, the, that way the rocks will be within the mountain, not sitting in front of it like a cardboard cutout. So we've got greys and blues and some browns. That, that's pretty much that colour as well. So we've got the grey blue and this natural burnt sienna. I want to get white with that. Is that the colour? Yeah, mix it a bit more. I'm just getting that value that I want of this. There we go. And do I want, I want this on a bit first and then the blues and greys can go over it. So pretty much get your rocks right to the edge. Let it break up. But just cover the edge. See the edge, how I'm covering the edge up? Don't leave a line there, though, because there are no lines in nature. You'll learn that as you get through your art journey. And we're just kind of making, see there, up here, boom, boom. Don't think about it. It is honestly, let's get a bit closer so you can see. It is honestly very easy to do. You just go for it and it just happens. Put one there, there. Uh, and this one's going to kind of come up. A bit of a shelf on it. Little bits under there. Bits of rock here. Now I'm going to pick up just the colour on its own without the white, just to get some darker vibes of that colour, see there? Just scratch it in a bit here or there as well. Just 
try not to think too much about it, just do it. And then some of this plain dark colour can go on a lot of these little lay down rocks. See where that water went over it, where I said don't worry about that because this colour is going to sit it down now. And just kind of put the colour on the tops of those rocks, just the tops of them. Too easy. Okay, now we're going to grab the grey blue colour. So I just need to wash that same brush because I'm going to use it. And I know what colour to use because I'm looking at the reference as a reference to what colours I can use. So I'll get the grey there and then I'll get some of the blue mixed with it. I want a heavy grey blue and then I'll highlight it with just pure grey because they are highlighted very grey, but they've got that blue vibe to them. It'll start coming to life here, so you get something here. It's pushing back, feathering up there a bit. Now I'm deliberately, see this one here? I'm deliberately going to leave that one in front of it. So that's what's going in my mind going on in my mind, sorry. And yeah, I'm not in Carolina. Okay, a bit more, some on their own there and on some of this brown stuff. On their own there and on some of the brown stuff. There's maybe one even sitting way up there near on his own. And just filter them down into the brown stuff there. See, the sun's here, so if anything, just this side of them will be getting hit with light. So like that bit there, and if there's a jutty bit on something there, and maybe here. Uh, where are we? Get some of this here. That's going to have some green mossy colours there. Now I'll get just the grey. Okay. Looks blue, but don't worry. Let's grab that grey again. I've run out of grey but I'll still have it tainted with some of the um, blue. I don't want a pure grey. Where's that blue there? There we go. And this is going to highlight it. So we're not highlighting it with white. We're using that colour, but lessen down with the grey. So I'll put it on there and just see if it's going to start change oh yeah look at that that's you want to keep the blue there but just have this filtering on it as well and it'll individualize some of these rocks don't worry about those ones there can i look at the monitor there they do look a little bit blue so I'm going to gracefully grey them a bit more. So we'll try this now. Let's go. Just to kill some of that blue. It's a bit too blue. Now, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favour and share it to your social media. Tell everybody about it. And if you're one of those people that don't like this video, well, you tell everybody. Now, that'll have some... I'm going to prime this here because I'm going to have some green moss just at the bottom there later. All right, let's get those mountains done. I'm going to use my viridian green. Use a forest green, viridian green, whatever. The, the dark, just grab a dark green. Not like a blacky dark green, just your darkest green. And go over here. Go over the black bits. Don't leave the black bits on top. Now, is the camera... No, I'm going to turn up the light meter. So let me go this way, just so you can see this green. And then I've got to remember to turn it back again. Otherwise, the 
whole video will be too glary. Now I'm going to just do a bit and have a look in my monitor just to see how it's faring. I've got to wet the paint a bit. It's a little bit too thick. There we go. Go above that black. Let me get some in here. Nice dark pockets of this green. Is the colour picking up? Just, it's very dark. I've got a light above on. I've got me overhead LEDs on. Now with some of this, I want to deliberately leave some really dark bits there. Wander through because the highlighted bits can really sink over them and add the depth as well. This is just a simple, I've done millions of these filbert trees. Bring some of this over. See, I'm bringing it over the rocks there, tracing it down, and they're all kind of crawling into the middle of this painting here. Now, I do want to get some of this also in the water. So what I'll do is... Um, probably about from about here because the rest is going to be the rest is going to be glary water so from about here and I want it scratchy so it looks like the surface of the water is breaking up the reflection okay And I can add the rest of that sun glare later. Let's get a little bit of this mossalizing down the bottom here. Okay, um, next green off the rack. I'm going to use, because I've got it, there's green oxide. It's more of a muted green, but I just feel it adds some, get out of there, your bubbles. That'll do. I'll just give that brush a bit of a wash. Now we'll get this paint going. Now watch what this one does. I've dried it. You need it dry so this one will stand out more. I've got to wet it a bit more. It's not wet enough. There we go. And I've got my coffee. My coffee's been getting neglected there. Oh. <coughs> yeah, righto. Yeah, righto, righto. Okay, back here, back here. Same again. But a little bit less real estate you're going to cover with this okay a little bit less real estate now my brush is going a bit dotty i don't want it looking dotty i want it to look a bit sharper than that why is it doing that this just this brush itself was 26 dollars on its own and sometimes the most expensive brushes don't last as long as the cheap ones The um, the yellow that I add to this will give it more oomph. I don't like... That's it. That's all right. I didn't like that liney look that was happening there. Get some of this dribbling over. Some of that into there, into that mossy bit. And when I detail those rocks a little bit more, they'll come to life. And that's working good. I'm liking that. And obviously we'll get just some values of this colour in the reflection. Now before I add the um, detail to those trees, I want to bring those rocks back forward. It's important that you do this uh, just to showcase those rocks. And we're going to try and... And I'll get that bit wet. 
and what I'm doing is I'm putting some sharper, see how I'm putting some sharper edges on them, just bringing them back in front there and some in front of that moss. There again. You just analyse, you see things and you fix them up. And then the, the highlights to our rocks is what's going to set everything back and forth from each other. Can I have a look at that? Not too bad, but there's not enough darkness in there. I've stole too much of the dark. So I'm grabbing some of the burnt sienna and probably a bit of the, the black with the burn umber and just getting some other darker values back in there mainly across the bottom where the water has stained the rocks where the water level come up and receded it's mainly there you lose too much of the darks you know about it because it just looks iffy affity getting some of the dark there and when i highlight it it'll bit of luck look the part Someone said, my God, the rocks, and hopefully I didn't ruin them. Kind of highlight these rocks again, just individualise them again. See, it's backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Look in the camera there. That's fine, that's fine. Now, I'll grab our filbert again. And I want to mix up, with my green that I was using, I want to put some yellow in it. So I'm going to use cadmium yellow, bring you down here, and then I'll turn the light meter back to normal. So as you get a, a true view of the painting, because otherwise you're not getting a true reading. So we've got our yellow here. This is the highlighted colour. And we're just going to keep pushing this in until we get the yellow green that we want. I don't want it too yellow. Our sky is very yellow, so we don't want it to clash yellowy, yellowy with that. I'll just throw a bit up there and have a look. Oh, yes, love that. Nice and rich, deep and rich. Okay, let's get bits of this now coming down and fluffing down where are we maybe a little bit out here Now see where the rocks are? I wouldn't mind just getting little bits of this. Just look at that lacing over the rocks there. Anything that's starting to look patterny, just brush it, brush it into the painting, destroy it so it looks more natural. Now these branches here should have been a dead wood colour because they're close to the light. Let me have a look at that. That's okay. A little bit strip on there. Okay, finish that. Now we'll just glare up the water so as we can get some beautiful behaviour happening there. So I'm using a flat again. I'm going to use my straight edge stick or my bullshit stick. And I just want to grab, I'll just use the... Um, where are we? Where's a bit of, um, don't want too much of that. I'll just have a little bit of Indian yellow. No, oh, sorry, yellow ochre. I just want to taint the brush with a bit of yellow ochre, okay? Uh, where can I reach this? I'll do it over here. And I want the white, but see how I've just tainted it with that yellow because I didn't want it pure white so I've got to mix it now so there's no blobs in it there we go get it a little bit wet with some water
Okay, now we'll sit this painting down. We're going to come right against... Come down a bit. I'm pushing the rocks into the water. Where's that colour? And it's pretty much coming all the way across here. Where are we? Leaving the top. And scattering it through that raw sienna colours we put there. How far does it go? Pretty much out here. And this will finish the water off, believe it or not. Now, when I was learning to paint, I couldn't find anyone that showed me how to paint water like this, but I like this look of water. That's why I'm doing it. And now hopefully you guys like it and you start putting these glary bands across your water there. You'll see in a few of my paintings how I've just had different, like white or blue or, or um, different coloured bands going across the water. It just adds more realism, I feel. Now, there's a lot of glare coming over this reflection and it's breaking up. So we'll get right about to here. Don't have it too solid. Just let it scratch and feel your way over the water there. And maybe another bit just here. Just getting some vibes from the actual reference picture. Now, like I said, my son's there. I want to arc up his glare. So I want that splicing into the reflection. So the right-hand side of this brush movement that I'm doing is going to be, be like the edge of a comb just going into the reflection there. And you want to hide where the green's meeting the yellow underneath. Let me have a look. Now we do need the slightest of this look. Very thin. I'll get rid of that stick, have a look and analyze it. Getting there, get a bit more of this. just to sit that reflection down. What else is out here? There's some reasonable glare right here. I'm just dusting over this bit here. Still wanna see some of that darker color there. Can I have a look in there? Yeah, we've got it there. Now I'll just try a bit of pure white on its own. Okay, just to right here, pure white. Let's see what the pure white does. Dancing along here, coming down, get a bit more. Leave the rock there. Now, if you've covered up too much of your rocks, which I have, you can always fine tune them and sit them back on top of the colour that flattened them. This is a fun, easy painting to do. You can do this, okay? If you think you can't, tell yourself you can and practice it and then give yourself the opportunity to learn how to do it and you'll be surprised that you can do it, okay? You really can. If your passion is there and your want is there to do it, you can. And maybe, 
just a little bit filtering out here with the pure white, not too far, but just about there. Okay, we'll sign this and reveal it. And once again, thank you for watching. If you want to buy this painting or any of my brushes, message me on Facebook. There we go. That's not too shabby, is it? Beautiful dusk setting sun over a hill in front of some foreground water there, foreshore there, and I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. It was very exciting and colourful, and if you like what I'm doing, you make sure you tell your friends. But if I've offended you in any way, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.